Welcome to the Epic Real Estate Investing Show, and today we're gonna to talk about a multi-million dollar mindset. All right, help me welcome to the show, Romacio Fulcher. Romacio, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Matt, and congratulations to all the success that you have been able to produce as a result of the show, uh, both online and offline. Appreciate it, thank you very much, and glad you're here. You know, um, I know you, You've got your hands in a few things, and I wanted to, to talk about each and every one of those things, but uh, you did essentially get your start in real estate. Can you tell me what you were doing before you got involved in real estate? I dropped out of college, early 20s, uh, about 20 years old. I was broke, okay? I come, I come from East Oakland, uh, is yes. where I grew up, and uh, I moved to Sacramento to go to Sac State, and I dropped out of college after a year, year and a half or so, and long story super short, I literally, uh, I found a guy one day, um, just, you know, I was looking for, you know, trying to figure out a way to, you know, get my life on track, right? I met a gentleman who was the uh, CEO of his own real estate and mortgage firm. And I'll never forget uh, the number one question that I asked this guy when we met in a burrito shop is I said, listen, what do you do? Because you are looking clean. He was dressed in a pinstripe blue suit. I mean, this gentleman was, he was cleaner than the board of health, Matt. Okay. He was clean. He was clean. And there I was, I was dead broke college dropout. He gave me his real estate card and told me what he did. And I, you know, I followed up with him. Long story short, he hired me as his assistant. I was mm -hmm. his assistant on all commissions and I was a telemarketer. That's where I started. So I mm -hmm. was the guy that would hit the phones back in the day when you could telemarket and I would call the farms list. And if these are real estate investors, you guys should know what a farms list is. It comes from the title company. Yep. And literally, um, people were hanging up on my face. Like it was, man, it was crazy, you know, within the first two seconds. And I was dead broke, but I was determined. And when we talk about mindset, this is very important for all of you. Don't care who you are. You need to understand this, that if you're going to be successful at anything, real estate, parenting, whatever it is, You've got to have a burning desire to be successful. What I have found uh, with all entrepreneurs that I've, that I've interviewed and taken the time to pursue and learn about, because like you, I always love to know where people come from. I, I don't like hearing about how success successful you are now. I want to know what is the storyline from where it all originated from. Take me back to the root. And what I have found, guys, is that literally you have to have a burning desire to be successful. Uh, success is nothing more than the progressive realization of a worthwhile goal. That's it. And so uh, if you don't have that mindset, it is going to literally evade you. In other words, it's kind of hard to give a man or a woman a dollar if you really don't believe you should have it. Okay. So again, I, 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 for me, I wanted to be successful. I never put a number on it. I just wanted to make progress with my life. And the first thing that you must do is identify the right mentor. I believe, Matt, that mentorship is wisdom without waiting for it. You know, many of us have all said, I wish I would have known then what it is that I know now. The only difference between then and now is wisdom. And wisdom comes right. from two places, your own personal mistakes and it comes through mentors. Mentors mm -hmm. can actually teach you not only from their successes, but obviously their failures as well. And so throughout my journeys in life, Matt, the mentorship aspect has served me both in real estate and mortgage and also in my current endeavors as well. So what inspired you to go for real estate? So it was the guy that was, that was looking really sharp, right? And you made that transition. He kind of threw you into the fire to start making those calls. Uh, we've all been there. We all started there and so I'm still very much doing it. Uh, I think it's a really healthy muscle to uh, develop. Well, right? well said. Well right? said, Matt. Absolutely. And you know what? The one thing that I was really interested in talking to you about is because we kind of have reverse lives or reverse journeys in the sense that I got started in, in, in multi-level marketing or I had a, a good venture in there and what we sold was real estate investing education. So that's how I ended up being uh, I, I consumed the product as much as I sold it and that I did because it, it's turned into to quite the, uh, the venture for me. But um, I look back and a lot of my teachings right now have to do with uh, the lessons that I learned inside of that environment, inside of, of mentorship and, and personal development. 
and then just getting out there and working those muscles and you know and it's a uh, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have that experience so you kind of went the other way around so what was it that had you go from real estate of what you were very successful in initially to go look for something else and you kind of went into the the multi-level marketing type thing or the network marketing which I left so tell me about that you are the first person sincerely Matt that in less than five minutes you 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 pick that up most people typically pass through the multi-level marketing arena and if they don't make it big in MLM it becomes a springboard that actually like you said those skill sets and things that they learn in that training ground mm -hmm. aid them into being successful in other areas right in my case it was the opposite that's right so for me you your question was is what was did, did I target real estate no i was broke i literally <laughs> was broke and i always believe that the number one question you can ask any man or woman is what do you do and so I was in a burrito shop in Sacramento, dead broke. And I saw this gentleman, Brent Peterson, and I said, hey, what do you do? And it just so happened to be my broke butt, right? Living in an apartment, barely could pay my rent. I knew nothing about a mortgage and I dang sure didn't know nothing about no real estate. Mm -hmm. but, but this is what I want everyone to understand who's watching and listening to this. Mentorship, mentorship. You must, I always say, the only thing the mentor can't give you is a burning desire, okay? But you, once you have a desire for more in your life, whatever more is, you know, once you have that reason why you mm -hmm. have to have more, the next best thing you can do is find an expert, find a mentor, someone that has already achieved what you're trying to do and learn from them. That's the shortcut. Right. And so for him... He was that guy, but unbeknownst to me, I wasn't looking for real estate. I was looking for a mentor. It just so happened to be the man was in real estate. And for me, when I realized that this gentleman was giving me his time and energy to, you know, on how to, to learn the profession, man, I wasn't going to disappoint myself nor him. I didn't take it for granted. Again, I was broke. So that's another thing, valuing the mentor, which is a, which is a whole nother uh, mindset, you know, that we can get into later. But so mm -hmm. basically I started with real estate, uh, mortgage and real estate, worked at the bottom as a telemarketer, worked my way all the way up to owning my own brokerage firm, had two of them, both in real estate and in uh, real estate and mortgage. Then I also had a real estate investment company where obviously we bought distressed properties at a discount, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, 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 and that's, that, that was my journey through real estate. And then, uh, you know, I received a phone call from a very wealthy real estate friend of mine. This guy was worth about 40, 45 million bucks, all from real estate liquid. And he called me and he introduced me to network marketing. And I was so negative, Matt, I always tell people that I was so negative when it came to network marketing, that if you would have put me in a dark room, I probably would have developed. That's how negative I was. <laughs> I, I, I want nothing to do with MLM. Uh, because I was literally locked and loaded on real estate. I was a multimillionaire at the time. Now, of course, let's not forget, because I don't want to get all of these kudos like I'm the man. I got involved, Matt, at the right time. I got involved in real estate. We're talking 1998, 99. Okay, so right. we all know if we can turn back the clock, that was a premier time specifically if you were living in California where we live. So you were doing well in real estate and you decided to go pursue something else. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit more about mindsets again, but I want to, I want to, I want to get your whole story. Mm -hmm. I believe that the most foolish thing any one person can do honestly is have one stream of income. And I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you why there is a book a sm and I don't read a lot as much as I should. I'm more of an audio person. So I'll listen to you versus yeah. for me to read is too slow. I like to hear. Um, but there's a book called who moved my cheese. Ah, Love and the, re the reason why, and the cheese, for those of you that don't know, cheese is a narrative referring to money. And if you only have one stream of income, the moment your cheese gets moved, uh-oh, you now get caught with your pants down. Right. And uh, that, that, that's what, what I saw a lot of wealthy people do. I saw a lot of intelligent people do it. And I felt like I wasn't so smart if I didn't, you know, take on that mindset. So when I was in, I would have never gotten involved, Matt, in multi-level marketing if I had not received a credible phone call. This is key. Mm -hmm. From someone who I respected that was making, like I said, $40, 45000000 million. That's what he was worth. 
So when the call came from him, my initial reaction was, I'm not interested, but I respect you. You must see something that I don't see. Right. And, and that's when I laughed at him when he said multi-level marketing. And he told me on the phone, he said, Ramasio, shut up. You sound stupid. You sound ignorant. You sound uninformed. He said, listen, when you finally make more money than me, then you can laugh at an invitation I give you. But until then, hush your mouth and get on over to my house. <laughs> right. At that time, Matt, I swallowed spit. No one is usually, people don't usually talk to me like that. Uh -huh. And so um, I went over to his house and that's when I was pleasantly surprised. And a lot of the myths and misnomers that I had about the profession, I was clearly uh, misguided and, 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 and redirected. When I really saw that this was real, and I'm the type of person, Matt, listen, I don't care if it's real estate. I don't care if it's investing. I don't care if it's network marketing. If you don't have what I'm looking for, you shouldn't even call me because you're wasting time. I'll never listen to any man or woman that doesn't have the fruit on the tree that you're trying to convince me is fruitful. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how I operate. What do you do to, uh, you know, to inspire your people so they actually go out and they, they do the work and they implement so they get their results? Or is that just something that you either got it or you don't? How do you handle that? I build relationships with people like yourself and I find out what's missing, okay? What's missing? What is it about your life currently that you truly want more of? And that either will be, you know, better health, more cash flow, more freedom, whatever. I find out what's missing. And frankly, if there ain't nothing missing and they're perfectly content with their life, ta-da, toodles, see you later, right? right? Mm -hmm. But now- once we find out what a person is looking for, we show them how to attain that through this particular model. Now, let's back up here. I want you to understand that for me, the thing that was most attractive to me about this model was two things, residual income, which obviously I understand real estate extremely well. And when you look at the residual income that, 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 that I currently earn right now, I don't know one real estate investor that can go toe to toe with me, I paid $1,300 and now I make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands on a monthly basis of residual income in less than one year. Mm -hmm. I don't know a real estate investment that does that, although I do have real estate investments. So the thing that caught my attention, Matt, was residual income, number one. Number two, the thing that caught my attention was leverage because I do know small business owners and these are people that typically nine times out of 10 the business generally owns them. Why? Because in a traditional business structure, there's only a hundred pennies and a dollar and nobody is going to work as hard for your company as you are willing to work for it. So as a result, the time that it takes you to produce your income is at the sacrifice of you don't have as much leverage as we do. Between this podcast, between what we have on our online education platform, you know, within five minutes, every single person would know how to fill out a purchase agreement and present it to a seller, mm -hmm. right? So that's the easy part. Why they don't do that on a daily basis, now that's, that's on them. That's between their ears. That comes from their burning desire or lack thereof. So um, what, would, what would be the advice or, yeah, I guess, how would you point them towards finding that burning desire for themselves? You know, I'm going to be honest with you. And, and that, that it's a great question. And I'm going to give you the best answer that I truly believe. I'll never tell you something that I don't believe. I believe success comes from either inspiration or desperation and nine times out of 10 desperation more so than inspiration. Right. So desire will be born when people are desperate to, for more and not everybody is at that place in their journey. And this is where professionals like you and I have to understand that. Just because someone raises their hand and says, yes, Matt, I want more cash flow. Yes, Moss, I want more, does not necessarily mean because their mouth said it that they really are going to put the elbow grease or work uh, 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 necessary to complete that desire. It doesn't mean that. Mm -hmm. So what that individual is going to learn about themselves is maybe I don't want it as bad as I said I do. Maybe mm -hmm. I want the shortcut or some type of lottery ticket, you know, where I can just go, you know, throw a few dollars in a currency and watch it become a millionaire next week. You know, I don't know. But my point is, it's not until 
a person gets to that place of desperation that real desire is truly born. Again, remember my story. I said I was broke. Because right. I was broke, I aspired to fix it. I believe if something is broke, you should fix it. Okay, mm -hmm. ain't, ain't nothing cool nor cute about being broke. Right. But there are some people that are not driven by money. And this is the thing that I don't like about some of us professionals. We talk about money and yes, money is a tool. It is the most important thing that I believe you should aspire to attain because you can't live your purpose, your passion, nor make a difference without any money. You can't help the poor if you flat out are one of them. You can't. <laughs> However, though, they don't like to be baited with the money conversation. Stop talking to me about money, says some, some people. Talk to me about purpose. Talk to me about you know doing something, helping make the world a better place. Talk to me about causes and things that they really can get emotional about. And then, Matt, you will find their desire. You will find their passion. But if you just talk about, hey, do you realize the economy is all effed up and you need to have more money because blah, 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 blah. Well, no, of course I realize that, but money just doesn't do it for all people right. like it does right. for some of us. Yep. So the, the, the conversation has got to change so that you can find out once again what's missing. There's a quote out there that says it's not how much money you make or not the success that you achieve, but it's, it's who you become along the way. And I think my experience, and it's, I don't know, it's been over 15 years now, but I think it really created who I am today. It's who I became along the way by doing that. And, and the two things that we have specifically in common is it's a people business. And if you don't like people, this ain't the business for you, <laughs> right? I always say every piece of real estate you buy or sell is going to be from or to another person. So that's right. You better figure that part out, right? Yeah, totally. Well, I, love, I love I love real estate, man. I do, um, but I like I said, like I said earlier, I love cash flow. And um, now, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, as of recently, you know, you know, you know the story. Twelve months ago, I, I found the, the 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 company that I'm with now, and oh my God, it's just absolutely epic. It's amazing. Here, I'm here in uh, uh, Las Vegas right now doing this interview mm -hmm. with you, and I'm at the CES show. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's yeah, yeah, I was just I was just in Vegas a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the largest consumer electronics show in the world, and we are the only network marketing company in 47 years to have our own booth at the show uh, because mm -hmm. the, the product that I represent today is technology. We re we uh, we developed a wearable you know a wearable device here that mm -hmm. we have, and um, it's the first wearable in the world that monitors all of your health vital signs in real time. And just yesterday, we made a huge breakthrough announcement in humanity. This is the first device that now will monitor all of your blood sugar and blood glucose levels non-invasively. Hmm. So you know, that's gigantic. And my next question that we would wrap this, this conversation up with was what's in your future, your near future that you're most excited about? And so maybe that was it? Yeah. You know, listen, I've been here with my current company. Uh, I've joined a year ago. This is a six year old publicly traded company. Mm -hmm. we, we market the latest and greatest in technology. And that's what we do. And, um, you know, it's network marketing. Uh, Toshiba came to us about 16 months ago and they wanted to buy the rights for the technology from us. Mm -hmm. You know, and Toshiba's a hundred billion dollar company, uh, excuse me, $50 billion company, been around for a hundred years. We told them no. Uh, our CEO was the very first man to, uh, invent the very first touchscreen computer. So he told Toshiba, no, you can't buy us. I, I, I invented this product for everybody to enjoy, but I want average people to win. Hence, I'm choosing network marketing as the method of distribution. We always teach people the same stuff I taught people in real estate. The trend is your friend, okay? And I teach people how to spot the right trends. Hence, I made millions of dollars, 1999, uh, for many, many years in real estate. Uh, I don't regret it, I love it. It made me who I am today. But at the same time, one of the knacks that I try and keep my eyes open for is identifying trends. And the wearable tech space, it's just, it's just it's going crazy right now. And so in one year, I started with, it cost me less than a couple thousand dollars to join, December mm -hmm. of 2016. And December of 2017, uh, I now have made literally uh, in one year $2.3 million in commissions from this while also picking up another $2 million in stock. Mm -hmm. And um, literally, that's all reflective from helping a lot of people. Right. And so right now, what's got me most excited is right now, literally, I'm literally uh, look, looking to help 75 different people earn an extra $10,000 per week, per week. Mm -hmm. I earned 16000 my very first week, starting from scratch, using our online system. And so that's what I'm looking to do is help literally 75 right. people earn ten grand a week.
And mm -hmm. um, they can find me by going to my landing page, uh, workwithromacio.com, workwithromacio.com. Right. It's R-O-M-A-C-I-O.com. Uh, Perfect. Well, you're answering all my questions just seconds before I ask them. <laughs> That's good. We must be in sync. Yeah. yeah I can imagine that you've uh, in inspired some listeners. And if they wanted to go and reach out to you, the best way to do that is workwithromacio.com. That's it. You got it, That's man. It. All right, man. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Good luck to you. Congratulations on all of your success. Hey, and the same to you, man. Thank you. And congrats to you as well. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. All right, we man. Want to, we want to do this again. Let's do it. All right. You got it, man. See you, Have buddy. All right. Bye-bye. Okay,